thoughts uh, on this uh, particular bill that has been moved by the majority leader that uh, essentially this bill seeks to you know, curb fundraising, if I might, uh, or rather regulate fundraising, if I might put it as simple as such, Madam Speaker. I think one thing I must say, Mr. Speaker, is that the majority leader has been greatly misunderstood. I listened to the minority whip describing the intent of this bill as being able to overly deal with any kind of donations or any kind of charitable deeds, especially when it comes to money. I don't think that that is what the majority leader seeks to cure here. Because I don't think that the idea of this bill is to attack, for instance, the, the charitable organization that we have in this country, if you may, you may call them also non-profit organizations. I think that uh, what the majority leader is seeking to cure here is the problems that we have seen in this country of public leaders using the platforms of fundraising as a way of basically capturing the people and as a way of insincerely taking control of public discourse. I think that is a fundamental problem. And Madam Speaker, I think that to that extent, the majority is very right. Because Madam Speaker, chapter six of the constitution, which is what I think is the, is the crust of the problem the majority seeks to, to, to solve here, Madam Speaker, Article 73, under that chapter six, talks about responsibility of leadership. And Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, sorry, we have seen a lot of lack of responsibility by leadership, where the political leadership, to be specific, has been very irresponsible on issues of fundraising. Madam Speaker, one, the responsibility comes in the uh, form of, you know, the amounts of money that we see going to fundraising are amounts of money that cannot be explained by any means possible by the political class. This is a reality that the public is getting tired of that of kind of behavior. And then number two, we are seeing a pseudo control whereby when a politician contributes in different platforms or different institutions, then they take control of that institution completely. Now, this is a reality that we must face as a country. This is why the majority leaders come with this particular bill. And that is the reason why I'm taking you back to Article 73 under Chapter 6 of the Constitution that talks about responsibility of leadership, where it says, under Article 1, that authority assigned to, to a state officer, A, is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is inconsistent with the purposes and objectives of this Constitution, demonstrates respect of the people, brings honor to the nation and dignity of the office, and promotes public confidence in the integrity of the office. Madam Speaker, what has happened in this country is that people have lost uh, public trust in public officers by uh, being led by politicians particularly, and then politicians who are going to do rambles in different places, Madam Speaker, have also lost respect for the people, Madam Speaker. And also, the acts of Arambe that we are seeing in this country, in the manner in which they are exercised, Madam Speaker, do not bring honor to the nation, and they do not bring integrity and dignity to the offices that we have. What does this mean, Madam Speaker? If you further in that article, sub-article B, it says that authority assigned to a state officer vests in the state officer the responsibility to serve the people, service, rather than the power to rule over them. The political class, because of this Arambe, are ruling over our people. They are not serving our people, Madam Speaker. So this is a problem that is a serious conversation that the majority has brought in this house that then must be addressed. Now, the question is this. Is this the right way to respond to this problem that we are facing in the country? This is what I want to appeal to the majority leader, that this is not the right way to be able to respond to this problem. Because what the majority leader is trying to do here is that he's trying to legislate bad behavior. Madam Speaker, you cannot legislate bad behavior by politicians in this country to use platform of fundraising to control the people, to rule over the people, to disrespect the people, to take advantage of the people, Madam Speaker. This 
bill is basically indicting the ESEC, Mr. Ma Madam Speaker. Because we establish a constitutionally allowed institution to deal with the misbehaviors of public officers and state officers under ESEC, Madam Speaker. This bill basically tells us that the ESEC has completely failed in doing its work. And instead of sponsoring this bill, Madam Speaker, I want to encourage the majority leader that together we can work on rethinking the ESEC in terms of the way the ESEC can deal with matters of Chapter 6 of the Constitution, Madam Speaker. Because that's where the rot is coming from. You cannot legislate fundraising in this country, Madam Speaker. Because we are people of Kenya and we come from communities, from the family to the community to the tribe to the county and then to the nation, Madam Speaker, we know what fundraising goes to do, Madam Speaker. And for the purpose of this conversation, Madam Speaker, I want to enumerate them. Madam Speaker, we have got four fundamental areas where our people find themselves in situations that they did not wish to find themselves in, where then they are forced to fundraise for. The first one, Madam Speaker, is education. Madam Speaker, there are schools in Nyatike sub-county. There are schools in Masangora in Kuria West sub-county. There are schools in Kuria East, Madam Speaker. There are schools in Rongo, where I come from, that kids sit under the table of their parents to be educated. And when they go to school, they sit under the tree to be educated. What is wrong when that community comes together to sit down, that in the event that the government hasn't built a school there, then they can come together as a community to build those schools, Madam Speaker. What is the problem with that? And, do you, and are you telling me that today, Madam Speaker, if there are people who have come and they don't come from a family of well-being, then they cannot reach out to their neighbors who are well off in the neighborhood to come and help them build those schools? Madam Speaker, all the schools in this country have been built as a function of fundraising. We cannot kill that, Madam Speaker. On the same education, Madam Speaker, the next problem is the problem of school fee, Madam Speaker. I can assure you, Madam Speaker, that 70% of young people who have passed primary school, Madam Speaker, cannot afford to go to school despite the fact that we have got CDF to supplement their school, school fee, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I take this time to share with you, and I'm not doing this for the sake of gimmicks. In the year 2005, Madam Speaker, having been adopted by a Kikuyu family in 2004 and lived with eight families, I was meant to join Friends School Kamusinga in 2006 because I did my exams in 2005. And Madam Speaker, because I could not be able to afford school fee, remember that what we are doing now, the former president, President Kibaki, had tried to do it by executive power. President Kibaki had put an executive order that banned public solicitation of funds in 2004, 2003, Madam Speaker. When I passed to go to Friends School Kamusinga, Madam Speaker, I did not have money. But because the, the issue of fundraising had been banned by the, uh, the Kibaki administration, Madam Speaker, it meant that I had to go to the DC to be able to get a form of a pro forma to raise money, Madam Speaker. For three months, I could not be able to get the DC trade from your performer to go and solicit funds, Madam Speaker. When I eventually got the performer, Madam Speaker, I was only able to raise 800 shillings after three months, Madam Speaker. I missed my entire first semester or first term because I could not be able to raise money and I could not be able to go through getting even to the DC's office, Madam Speaker. And I had to join Friends School Kamusinga in second term, when all my peers had already gone through a first term, Madam Speaker. And even then, it was through that act of having a pro forma, Madam Speaker, that I met one gentleman called Kennedy Okongo, a lawyer in town, who wrote for me the full check to go to school and be able to be a senator today in this house, Madam Speaker. Then today you are saying that for kids like me, who might not have been aggressive enough to get to a DC, now has to go to a cabinet secretary or a CEC in county to get to be financed to get a fundraising document to go and raise money. Where are we going as a country, Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, number two, 
The area that people are facing a lot of problems in is medical issues, Madam Speaker. It might look simple for people here who have got medical cover to think that medical issues in this country are easy. But Madam Speaker, we have got people in this country who are held as prisoners of hospitals because they cannot be able to pay 30,000 shillings to get out of an hospital, Mr. Madam Speaker. So the moment you say that for them to be able to raise money, to leave hospitals, to, uh, to raise money, to go and get medical attention, Madam Speaker, then they might look for the CEC. They must form a committee. They must look for people who are well off. Madam Speaker, what are we doing to our country? Let us legislate for bad, not, not the bad manners of politicians. Let ESEC do their job, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we also have another area here that people just don't understand. The burden of funerals in this country, Madam Speaker. That's another area that me as a political class have faced a lot of requests on, where people, somebody has suffered and died in a hospital. Then they get imprisoned in mortuary, yet they're dead, because their own families cannot be able to afford a fee of 30,000, 10,000 shillings, sometimes as little as 5,000 shillings, Madam Speaker, a family cannot be able to get their person out of a mortuary. What is wrong with that person reaching out to a neighbor or to me, who might be a little bit privileged to help out and to lend a hand to get this person out of a mortuary, Madam Speaker? These are real issues. They're not stories. They're in our communities, Madam Speaker. Now, I know that the bone of contention that has been there is the issue of church and mosques, Madam Speaker, where the political class have, be, have been able to use pulpits and places of mosque to do political uh, campaigns and make it difficult to make sense for, for nourishment of our people in terms of spirituality, Madam Speaker. Again, I do not support the idea that we can ban fundraising for churches, that we can ban fundraising for mosques, Madam Speaker, because the roles that mosques and churches play in terms of moral compass of our community, Madam Speaker, the value might not be quantifiable, but indeed, it's untold in terms of the impact they're having on our community. I think that, Madam Speaker, let the churches self-regulate in terms of controlling the bad manners of some few politicians. And it's not all of them, Madam Speaker. It's some few politicians who have got bad manners of using this platform as a place of, of bravado and ego setting in terms of their political nourishment instead of their spiritual nourishment, Madam Speaker. But we cannot ban the political class, the, the public officer, the state officer, the private individual, the corporate individual from raising money to grow churches, to grow mosques, and to grow houses of worship when these places are actually helping to contribute in supplementing the government's effort in terms of building our moral capacity in this country, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if you want to build a strong home, you must constantly build three things in a human being. That is why even in creation, there is only trinity. That's why even in creation, we are created in three, in threes, Madam Speaker. The first thing you must feed in a human being, Madam Speaker, is the mind of a human being. That's why we have got education system. But once you've, you've fed the mind of a human being, Madam Speaker, there is still no peace if you do not feed the heart of a human being, Madam Speaker. And that is where the churches and the mosques are coming from, Madam Speaker. But a peaceful heart with an educated mind is never peaceful unless you also feed the stomach of this human being, Madam Speaker. That's when you've got a complete human being, Madam Speaker. So any moment you take away any of those segments in the society, you can't make it. We as a government and as a political class can only feed the stomach. Education institutions can only feed the brain. Where do we leave the hearts of our people? It is to the churches and the mosque, and we cannot allow for any law that makes it impossible to build those churches and to build those most, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in this bill, we have also seen a provision, very fast, Madam Speaker, that says if you want to do fundraising, then you must do it in your family. So what happens to a family where, me, I come from a family where the first name that has been heard for about in this country, Madam Speaker, in our family, in our entire generation, that Arun Cheriot knows is Eddie O'Kech. Because my grandfather, Kawisa, died long time ago in some village in Yakune, near Gogo Falls, that nobody knows, meaning it has got an impact on the well-being of my entire community and my entire families. 
So you are letting me be in a situation whereby if you want to do for fundraising, I can only do it with my family and not with the, the family of Mungatana who I now know who I can invite and tell him I support me here and there. Madam Speaker, this is now discriminating and then making people to be in their own cocoons of successful families, the haves versus have nots. We cannot allow that in our country, Madam Speaker. And lastly, Madam Speaker, there is the issue of the regulators. You are talking about regulations being done by Cabinet Secretary. Madam Speaker, in, in, in law, it looks easy. But in practice, how will this Cabinet Secretary regulate the President in terms of making sure that the President abides by the requirements of this law? It's not possible. The President cannot, cannot, cannot be regulated by the person that he is the supervisor and the boss of. Madam Speaker, at the county level, you are saying in this bill that the CEC in charge of planning and social development will regulate fundraising. How will this person regulate the governor? Where our governors have got so much ego that you cannot even tell them something in a funeral or in a function. It will mean that some political class will have more powers to even take advantage of fundraising further than some political class that don't have power. Yeah? So it will be a business for the, the higher political class to actually do what they want with this fundraising thing and leave those people who are smaller to be, in fact, you are giving the most powerful political people a tool to harass their opponents and other people with this bill, Madam, Madam Speaker. This is a good uh, and a well-intended bill to cure the problems of our leadership under Article 73 of the Constitution, but it is not a solution. It is legislating a behavior of bad politics, bad manners of politicians that cannot be cured by this bill. Let us sit as a house and come up with a legislation that will help us rethink the entire ESCC and make sure that ESCC can do its job or disband it and come with a more functional anti-corruption institution that can deal with corrupt leaders. With that, Madam Speaker, I reject this bill in entirety. In the entirety. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Eddie. Uh, Senator, Senator Abbas Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to also join my colleagues that this bill will not help any Kenyan. As you are aware, the spirit of Harambe has been the fundamental cornerstone for this country in terms of development. Um, it's only after CDF and the other funds came in and the country economy improved that people want to change the spirit of brotherhood. The Harambees or the fundraisers have created cohesion in this country. That most of the poor people have really came up. Most of the students that today, most of our professionals, went to, for scholarships outside the country to Harambees. It created, uh, uh, fundraisers and Harambees have created love among the communities. It's only through sharing with the poor that we love one another. Honorable Speaker, we cannot be today throw away the brotherhood that Harambees have created. As you are aware, this country, almost 70% is below the poverty line. And they cannot even afford two meals in a day. They cannot afford to pay school fees. Initially, the government said there's free education but we're not seeing any free education here today. You are seeing even the primary kids have been told go and bring money. Mothers cannot even afford. They even sell chickens and all these things. Honorable Speaker, I've started working with this, uh, with this government way back in the 80s. And by the time I was starting job, the Harambe was actually at the peak. Because there was no school infrastructures. Kids were learning in the school and under the trees. At times, the chiefs were being used to go and collect animals or money from within the, the villages. Of course, it was just, sometimes they were using excessive force. There was a bit of corruption. But today, the classroom that I went to in my class one actually was built on with Harambe. And therefore, I cannot be able to support today to say that Harambe should be stopped or should be okay, abandoned. That cannot work for us. Honorable um, 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 Speaker, 
through fundraising, actually many Kenyans have got, they have sick uh, medical treatment outside this country. Medical conditions of these days, there's so many people who are sick. The medical services, hospitals actually have so much been commercialized. That somebody sleeps in a, stays in a, an ICU or HDU in one night or two nights and three nights, the cost becomes just unbelievable high. It is through Harambees that we're able to save people, the dead bodies, for emotionaries, because they've been held custody until money is paid back. Honorable Speaker, I will agree to that, uh, I will say that the corrupt are not the poor people. The corruption comes from the highest economies. The top guys who are stealing money. The people who have the money. This person, 80% or 90% of kids cannot even access money. They survive on only haram base and goodwills of their friends and the, and the next of kings. So if anybody wants to stop corruption through stop in Harambe, I think that's very wrong. What I will say is that let's, those who still pay more and more Harambe so that this money can come back to the public. If you say there's no Harambe, then those who stole, the corrupt people will keep the money in the banks or even overseas. So I think I will, we will encourage more Harambe if you will ask me that we will say so that at least the little they pay back, I think can be able to help the people that they have stolen their money. Honorable speakers, I think uh, what we are talking about here is kind of a pretense. Because I was hearing some of my colleagues here talking that uh, oh, Harambe will do this, Harambe is going to create corruption. My friend, corruption is not, uh, not coming from, uh, from the grassroots, it comes from the high top and top, up, top and uh, to, to down. Harambe, we know that it's actually starting from the office and uh, 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 institutions. So, Honorable Speaker, I think Harambe shall not be controlled. Harambe is cannot, I mean, if you want somebody to stop corruption, let this house produce, or let's institute a bill that will seriously deal with corrupt people. Like the China, you know? Even if you're going to be killing somebody, even if you're going to jail somebody 100 years, so that somebody can be able to face the consequences of his stealing. But Islamic Harambe is just because somebody has stolen and they want to clean his money, who will not help with some corruption. With those few remarks, I beg to support. I mean, I want to oppose the bill. Uh, thank you, Senator Abbas. Senator William Kipkemoi Kisang. Thank you, Madam Speaker.